Okay. Good afternoon. Welcome to Talking Trade Live with On The Tools. And we've got a special show this week. First of all, it's on a Wednesday. Um, so bless all the decks and spreads. They're going to be confused going what's going on. So today's Wednesday, just to uh, make sure you're not too lost. And we've got a brilliant show uh, sponsored by our great friends over at Tool Station. Um, and as you can see, the two guests today, um, Harry Malinder, who is a professional rugby player with Northampton Saints, who's been through a pretty evil uh, knee injury, came back, bust his foot within a week at training, another surgery. Um, so we're going to be talking about mental health because rugby and trades and construction, there is very, very similar crossovers. Um, and just to keep us trade supported, uh, we've got Matt, um, a spark, uh, sitting in his van. Um, obviously, as we know, Sparks, bless him, don't have to work too much. So, you know, he's got plenty <laughs> of time on his hands. But um, thanks for joining us. Now, as we all know, Time to Talk Day is tomorrow. So today we're going to talk about mental health, try and get this stigma dropped. And we're going to look at it from um, Tool Station's involvement with rugby and obviously their involvement with On The Tools. And we're going to have a good old chat. Keep comments coming in. Any questions, um, please send them in. Um, I will do my best to read all of them out last week. We had about 500, so I couldn't do all of them. But um, first of all, welcome, Harry. Uh, I We were just talking uh, before we came on air. Um, the great news is you got your hands dirty the other week, did a bit of landscaping. <laughs> That's it. Well, thanks for having me on, Andy. Um, good way to start. Yeah, I um, yeah, it was in, in the lockdown. I have to admit that I've uh, it was my first bit of manual graft, and uh, my dad shames me for that almost daily. He says, I've never worked a, a proper day in my life, um, but I've chose the same career as him, so I don't know how that works out. Um, and yeah, I had the landscape around and I was uh, mixing cement for him and I actually really enjoyed it. We put up some uh, seating area with some um, reclaimed scaffolding, um, tiled the floor. Um, so yeah, I learned on the job and uh, I definitely want to do some more. But as you said, despite being a professional sportsman, you know, you've got conditioning coaches, nutrition, all this. It, you were knackered. It's a different muscle group, isn't it? it honestly, I can't explain. I, I was calling my um, conditioners up in the evening saying, I'm sorry, I couldn't do my sessions today. Because <laughs> they, they sent us these programs to do at home. So I had like a run on the grass and uh, some weights. We had like a, I set up a little home gym at, at my place. Um, and I just couldn't do it because I'd been carrying the cement all afternoon. And, and so I will. I I am very grateful now and understand um, how hard it is for for certain trades. Um, well, just um, let's go back to the topic just for a moment. Mental health. Listen, rugby construction there's a lot of crossover generally quite male biased um, a lot of us having a crack on site or in the training pitch or in the change rooms whatever um, your injury how you were out for what was it 18 months it must mm. have hit you mentally big time suddenly what playing in front of 70,000 you're sitting in your lounge with your foot up yeah that's it and um, there really were some there really were some tough tough periods um, I think it's once that realization sit, hits you know, that you're no longer a rugby player for this large chunk of your life um, and that you don't have that, the kind of accolades and the side bits that come along with that, whether that be, you know, supporters, whether that be, you know, people asking about you, um, you kind of go missing for that period. Um, you know, no one really cares because you're not playing that next weekend or you're not in that particular squad. So it is, it is tough. There's some tough periods, but um, I feel very fortunate that I've got such a strong support network around me and my family and my friends that in those tough moments I could turn to them and uh, everything became a bit lighter because of that. Matt, I just want to go to one of the comments. Michael Rolfe, um, his uncle passed away from mental health. Why do they not help others with this disorder? First of all, Michael, I'm really sorry to hear that. Um, and listen, I've not hidden my struggles over the years with complex PTSD and everything else. Uh, the NHS are too stretched to help us and it's appalling. Matt, we don't get the help in construction, do we? No, we don't. And it's a massive shame that there's a there's a big stigma, isn't there, around, you know, um, if someone says, you know, tells you a problem, it's sort of you need to man up, you know, take that man up pill and, and you know, you, you sort of, <laughs> it's been like that for years, hasn't it? It's been like that for years and they still, like Harry was saying before, you know, the support that they have um, that's 
come through. How long ago did you say, Harry, a few years ago now, is it, that, you know, you get a phone call every now and then and ask if you're all right? Yeah, Matt, um, since, since I've been in, in the game probably six, seven years, there's been really good support. Yeah, and that's that's great. I think that's really good. Um, but because, you, you know, you might be a tradesman, you might be working on your own, you might be working on a site. And as you know, Andy, it's, there's a massive, you know, scaffolders let's say that they're they're the men of men aren't they but still in your mind you know like you you watch i don't know if you watch that the sas you know the selection process on that you can have the biggest strongest men in the world the fittest guys you know harry i'm sure i've just had a look at your profile 20 minutes ago you're a big you know strong fit fit lad but mentally you've got no idea how that person is because you mm. can't see the strength there, you know. So, so that yeah, it's it's difficult, and and I still don't know any help in trades, maybe in companies, but you know, for the sole trader, shall we say, you know, who maybe lives on his own or is you know his wife's too busy to to know how he's doing, then it's still difficult, isn't it? Well, I think the big thing for me, rugby is now professional. In my day, it was uh, sort of turning professional. Um, but because of that, you've now got the structures in place, as Harry said, to get that support, to have the phone calls. Yeah. You know, to, psychologists are now the norm. You know, if mm. someone said that to to me when I was playing, it was like, oh, God, he's barking at the moon again. Leave him alone. But now it's great that they've got them in as the norm. But Matt, sole traders, small companies, you know, micro companies, where do you think we could get this support from? Because basically government are doing bugger all. Yeah, I don't I don't think it's. Obviously, the NHS are stretched at the moment, aren't they? And they're doing. I know a couple of people who are, who are high up and who can see the whole picture of the NHS, and it's very, very difficult at the moment. Um, me and a couple of lads came together. Um, Duncan, who is Surf Base Bark, and and Sam, who does the podcasts. Um, we came together and we said, you know, we just started calling each other, and we we'd have a a. a zoom meeting once every once a week and we you know just see how we, how we were and then we came up with a challenge for the trades we we came up with a, a 28 day challenge um we set up an instagram page which is team positive charge and the challenge is um we said we'd wake up at 5 a.m we'd do a one mile walk or run um and then when you get back we do 10 press-ups 10 burpees have a normal shower and then when you're in the shower, you turn it to cold and, you know, you, you go under the cold shower um, for, for as long as you can sort of take it. Um, and then there was no eating uh, or only eating, I should say, between one and eight in the afternoon and also no alcohol. And, and we just did it as a three, you know, as we're, we're all electricians. Um, and then we, we put it out there on, on Instagram uh, if anyone wants to join and all of a sudden we've got 30 people on on whatsapp group and there's people do it individually um sort of through us who are not on the whatsapp group and it's great and everyone's going on about the challenge the challenges that they have one might be you know i like a drink on a saturday or the other might be you know i'm I, i've my, i'm now going to bed earlier because i've got to get up earlier and i think that i get individual messages and that that is, you know, someone might be struggling. And I think that's great that we can just sort of talk through it together because that's sometimes, sometimes there's no cure. It's just that someone wants to talk to you, mm. you know, and that's all it takes sometimes just to have 10 minutes for some with someone, you know, and you chat to them and, you know, you've never met them, but you chat all the time. And, and Duncan, me, Duncan and Sam, we're, we're very close now. It's, it's brought us in closer. And, and even the guys who are now, coming in as well you know and like i say and it, it, it's it's a massive thing and if if we we were like if we reach out to 100 people and we help one we've helped one and that's what we were sort of you know what we were sort of doing and and like i said before it's for no sort of reward it's for no financial reward it's just to help another human and i think that's a great thing um it'd be better if we had a you know i don't count the numbers but if i've got like 1500 followers or something but if we could reach out to someone because trades don't have a massive following, don't do they? But if we could reach out to someone who's got a big following, who then we can say, if you know any tradesmen, 
you know, get them to join our WhatsApp group and we can help it further and, and wider then, you know, when that'd be, that'd be brilliant. Yeah. So the big thing for me, having been through it, got friends that are going through it is you don't want to volunteer. And Harry, I'd like to hear your view on this sort of, you know, in the changing room or the, you know, your second team pitch training, whatever you're doing, but you, you sometimes don't want to ask someone that does seem struggling if they're okay. Cause you're like, shit, what am I going to say if they tell me this? But the reality is, they just want someone to talk to. I speak to the same mate. He's he's a prop, so obviously he's not quite all there, as we know. Um, <laughs> but he's um, I talk to him every day, and we just talk crap. It's someone to talk to. Do you think that people are afraid, Harry, of maybe talking on a pitch, you know, when you're training or in the changing rooms or afterwards? Because, shit, what do I do if someone approaches me with this? I think so, yeah, because it has no... Um, it doesn't matter where, which background you're from or, or which um, environment you're working in. Um, we all have varying degrees of mental health and, and um, the, the scale of, of problems that people have is, is vast. And so, like you said, sometimes people just want to chat. Yeah. Um, and I think that that's definitely the case that there's people, you know, wanting to talk but not, not finding – the necessary means to do so, I think, is is the challenge. It's how we how we normalise it. It's how we encourage people to speak out. And I think, like Matt referred to before, it's often easier for people to speak out when they're speaking to a complete stranger, whether that be someone that you've never met through WhatsApp or social media. Mm-hmm. Um, and I would just encourage anyone that's listening that um, that is struggling with with any issue to reach out to anyone. Um, someone they could confide in, or um, or a complete stranger, and just start that conversation because that that is the first step to to progress. Do you find with psychologists becoming more the norm um, in professional sports teams? Do you players talk more than you used to, or is it still a bit of a stumbling block? We do. the the stigma The stigma has definitely been reduced. Um, it's still there. There's there's no denying that. Uh, but we definitely talk more. We, we're definitely more open and more honest. It's still hard. It's hard for it's hard for rugby players and it's hard for for <laughs> tradesmen and women um, because it's it's in a way goes against a lot that we do in our environments, like we've referred to before, with the constant um, a banter between each other, the the, the lads chat. Um, sometimes gets in the way and people sometimes think well you know is this showing weakness it's completely not Um, and that's something that we need to we need to get rid of just want to read out one of the comments Um, this is you know one of the brilliant positive ones we get on this show Um, Martin Rome he's in construction uh, good lad Uh, let us know what trade you are mate Um, but he's also a hypnotherapist he sees it a lot on building sites no one wants to admit it and he's willing to help anyone for free um, I don't know how genuine that is, but if it is, um, then thanks ever so much, Martin. Um, we need to support each other. And, you know, there's some comments coming on from, you know, absolute dimwits saying man up and stuff. You know, that's the worst thing to tell someone if they're struggling. Trust me, I've been there. So have a word with yourself before you start piping up, um, thinking you're the big I am coming out with that with people on site, because believe me, it's the last thing they need to hear. Now, just going... Um, back to sort of site work and residential work Matt it's very different in my eyes you said before we came on air you do a lot of work on your own now that must be quite challenging especially in these weird times whereas if you're used to working with lads and lasses on a bigger site um, that could be easier to talk to but do you struggle a bit on your own sometimes? Yeah, to be fair, when lockdown came, I just realised that that I am unsociable (laughs) you know apart from a Wednesday night biking with the lads I am you know, in a way, I was I, n- nothing really changed for me, um, and I'm very comfortable in my own company. But I also do struggle with things. Um, you know, sometimes you you do want a a mate there, an oppo there. Sometimes you do you do need that bit of banter. You know, you miss it because um, human beings are are creatures who who need to be together, aren't they? Um, so yeah, so. But then, I, but then I wouldn't, I wouldn't want to be on a site because that's not my cup of tea whatsoever. Um, that's a good point. We're yeah. in, into. I mean, I the last time I did site work was I was eighteen, so nearly thirty yeah. years ago. 
in Sydney and it was bloody awful. It was yeah. hard work. Whereas yeah. residential work is easier, you know, yeah. I, personally, I think, because you're not up against, you know, time constraints as much. So it's a very different mentality. One man band, residential, commercial site work. And yeah. I, I don't, as, as you know, Harry, before we came on air, I, you know, I played a bit. So I understand that, you know, obviously the rugby side of it. Do you um sort of putting a lighter note on it? Do you yeah. feel that the pretty boy backs talk more than the fat boy forwards? Um, well, maybe we've probably got a few more brain cells of so that we have. can talk. Yeah. Um, yeah. No, like that, that some of those forwards, all they really seem to talk about is scrums and food. Um, so <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's a bit, it's a, not a very broad spectrum of conversation. Whereas <laughs> I guess uh, traditionally the backs are a bit more intelligent. So we might talk about <laughs> some, <laughs> some more complex issues and that. But one, one thing I want to touch upon again, sort of slightly lighter note. Um, obviously, you've seen the videos and um, across all social media of what we get up to on site. But you were saying um, before we came on air that um, it is so similar with rugby lads, as I remember. I mean, we, you know, we had it quite brutal, I think, compared with you guys. But you know, you've got lunatics jumping out of lockers and doing all sorts. So again, very similar setup to trades. Yeah, exactly the same. You know, we. we You've got you've got to have a laugh, don't you? And and that's why I feel very lucky. We have such a great environment at Northampton that we're all best mates, and uh, we get on so well that it just feels like you you're going to train with your mates. And especially in this period where the majority of people are forced to work at home, I, I think we can count ourselves very lucky that we get to um, go in, socialise with with the lads, have a good laugh, and chuck a ball around and exercise. Um, it really is. It really is a good a good crack at the at the club. There must be a sorry. Sorry, Matt. I just wanted to say before I read out that question um, to both of you. Do you think the fact that we do have a bloody good laugh and a crack and wind each other up? Do you think it makes it it harder to talk about you feeling low and crap because we're always kind of up here with the laughs, Harry? Do you think because of that it's harder to speak? Yeah, potentially. I think as well in rugby it's hard because there's. There's no waiting around, you know. We, the nature of what we, the competitiveness of our trade, and probably similar to um, it, the different your trades, is that we. There's always a game that coming weekend. There's always a next focus, and there's always someone below you pushing, wanting your place, and there's someone above you that you want to take their place. So um, that that fast nature of our environment, um, I think, sometimes prevents people from taking a minute to reflect and think actually. I need to deal with this, or I need to mention this. I need to speak up a little bit about this. So that po that possibly is a, is one of the reasons for it. Sorry, Matt. Just before I come back to you, I'm conscious. Um, I'm reading these comments, and there's a few people reaching out. And obviously, what we're talking about mental health, I want to um, go straight to them. Uh, Nick Webb is the first one. I'm in my fourth year of not working due to my mental health. I'm under crisis care and don't see a future. I used to make fitted furniture. Now I make keepsakes to try and occupy my mind well first of all nick thank you for reaching out with that comment because i see mental health as like an addiction until you admit you've got a problem you can't go out and get help so you've done the hardest thing by reaching out um it's great to hear that you've got care coming in um but matt maybe um what you're um sort of said about this um whatsapp group you're on getting into a routine's a big thing because when i had it it's easier to stay in bed you don't cook you don't do any washing you don't get up getting that routine like your group's doing um can actually make quite a big difference can't it yeah absolutely massive difference and and we we make sure you know every day uh, we do a live on instagram and we you know the comments are coming through mostly from people who are in the whatsapp group and you know not as such making sure people are up and doing it but being there to spur people on to get out of bed at that time and to, you know, to, to do the challenge um, and just to just to help help anyone that we can, basically. And because, that, like I said, there's nothing out there for trades. Um, and, and going back to the site work, like Harry, obviously, you've got a great team that you, you know, you play with. And that's that's a really good thing. But there must be teams out there where some people don't get on. You know, there's a bit of friction be between players. And that's the same with site work, isn't it? Sometimes, mm. like, I I run my own business, so I choose who comes with me. You know, I choose that. Whereas, Harry, maybe you can't choose that and you've got to play with, 
you know, if that ever happened, you've got to play with someone that you don't quite get on with. And that always happens. You know, there's always times in life where you're not everybody's cup of tea. Otherwise, you'd be a mug and and then friction starts, doesn't it? So, so I'm fortunate in that way that I can pick and choose what I do and who I do it with, you know, to, to the last detail. Um, so, so obviously this, if you are going to site, if you are going to be getting up and going to a site and there's lads who have contacted me saying, you know, I'm nearly in tears because I don't want to go to work, but I've got a family to provide for this challenge that we're doing and the challenges that we're going to be doing in the months to come, maybe not every month, but that, you know, we're going to keep this going and hopefully build it. This gives them something to concentrate on within themselves and concentrate their own mind on, you know, adapting and making themselves feel uncomfortable. Because if you can make yourself feel mm. uncomfortable to the to the top level, then anyone who gives you any grief yeah. or any bad banter, you can just shoo them away, you know, and that's the so best thing to do. That. Sorry to interrupt, mate. I want to get as many of these comments out as possible. No um, just joined us. Talking Trade Live with On The Tools, um, sponsored by our good friends at Tool Station. Time to talk day tomorrow. We're looking at mental health, um, not just in construction, but also rugby. And I'll emphasise union, um, not Lee. Um, as you can see, we have a, um, a pretty boy three-quarter from Northampton, um, who is obviously a great player, but he's been through it with his injury. And basically had most of his knee uh, blown to pieces on the field, came back, did his foot. So we're talking about the similarities of how rugby and trade does cross over. And I want to go through these comments. Uh, please keep them coming in. Um, Rob Whiffin, he's been out of the military for nearly a year now. I didn't realise how much having the lads around helped. And that's a big thing because rugby, military, trades, you've got that crossover. And, you know, having lads around and obviously looking at that, it's brilliant that he's able to talk to mate. So um, bear that in mind, you know, get the lads around you at work and open up. Um, oh, Gaz Crossland union. I'm leaving. He's obviously, he's obviously up North as a league boy, but um, I hate to say it being a union player and follower, the new rules, this is another subject, Harry, but the new rules in union, I prefer watching league now, you know, yeah. run into each other hard. Now you've got to have a kiss and cuddle in the front row before you engage. Um, <laughs> Going back to some of the comments, um, uh, Paul Richard Blake, years of ADHD and just about to start new medication, which is always better and let your close workmates know. So again, opening up, if you have any problems, it's surprising amount that either they're happy to back you or say they have similar problems. It also takes one little bit of stress away. Uh, great post, guys. Uh, well done. The big thing here as well, and Harry, do you find <clears throat> once that person... Let's say it's a big lumbering lock, six foot eight, 18 mm -hmm. stone, you know, no ears. Are they, if they're likely to say something and come forward and as the big like enforcer, more of you guys are going to open up, aren't you? Definitely, Andy. I think let's normalise it. Let, let's yeah. talk about it. Let's have these conversations. Let, let's be honest with each other because actually it is very probable that the guy next to you, either side mm -hmm. of you, has, has been through a similar situation. We all have we all have our different stresses and our, our things in our lives which you know test us, but let's speak up about them. Let's share them with each other. Maybe we can learn a little bit on how to deal with them. I think the stuff that Matt's referred to about tasks and setting daily objectives, no matter how small they are, is crucial. Um, if you can have something to to focus on and really commit to, uh, you get that sense of achievement. And being in a community of people that are doing the same, whether it be in a rugby team or on site. If we're all talking about how we're feeling, it's only going to make things better, whether it be our mental health, but also our productivity. You know, it's yeah. going to help the particular trade. It's going to help that team. And that's a big thing that we push at the club, especially is, you know, if we're, if we're feeling better as people, if we're better people, then we're going to be better players naturally. Would you... I'd love to put something to you. Matt's got this group and it's brilliant that he's spoken about it. And I've, you know, I'm all for it. I think it's superb. I don't think I could do the cold shower at five in the morning, but there we go. Um, Harry, if you were to say to all your teammates, you know, right, when we go to training, if we sit down and have a 10, 15 minute chat, everyone look at each other and say, right, is everyone all right? Do you think there would be a take up on that or would people still just go? There'd be, there'd be a take up. Look, there'd definitely be a take up. I can say that because we do it. We do it every day. Yesterday morning, I've, I've got a day off today, but the yesterday morning uh, we'd finish our gym session. We went and had a coffee together. 
socially socially distanced of course and wiped down all the all the machines but we we had we had a good chat you know and it, and it was for 10 minutes before our next session but you just see that people are at different stages and that that's the thing as well Andy I think that some people are um are going through stuff which they're not ready to speak about yet and that's okay as well that's what I'd say um and when the time's right speak up about it and and we can make some progress I think it's good to check in with your mates and that's you know, we seem to be doing it daily and, and it's making me and the rest of the lads feel a lot better. Matt, just um, quickly, we've got about five, ten minutes left. Um, we've had a few comments. Apologies, they've they've gone off the screen. Um, as a uh, small company or as a sole trader, one-man band, who can we reach out to? Because, you know, the bigger firms, the big developers, you know, the, the, the Wimpies, Basim and Barrett's, all of them have, have started to put mental health teams in place. But who do you think we can reach out to? Um, as would it be fellow trades, and is that fair on fellow trades? Yeah, I think that you know when you when you're not consistently with other people like Harry is, and I think that's great, Harry. By the way, because if you're helping your teammates and they're helping you, you're going to get on better, and you're going to you know essentially play better rugby mm. and be a better team, and you know. The aim is to win more trophies, and and that's a great thing because you're doing everything positive there. Whereas what we're doing, it's not always the same. You might be going to three or four different sites a week, or you know, twenty different jobs. Um, and to be honest, the help, I've, I've, I don't know of it apart from the NHS. Apart from going to your doctor and saying I feel down, um, you know, and then you get prescribed tablets, I take it, or you, you might go to some sort of meeting with someone, um, then I don't know. But the tablets only only sort of mask it, don't they, in a way? Matt, you need I was to say that, mate. I've been, yeah, on, um, yeah. I've been on pills for years, coming off them. Um, they make things worse. You get that short-term lift, yeah. but then everything gets worse. There's all this research proven. If you go to, the, go to the doctor, first thing they'll do is prescribe pills. Don't do it. Yeah, There's other which, ways of, of getting through it. And, yeah. you know, I've, I've done it. There's other ways, alternative ways, which work far better than sticking yourself on these pills, which so, if you yeah. have the ingredients, you have a heart attack. It's mental. Yeah, I mean, I've never I've never taken, uh, you know, any sort of pill, prescribed pills like that. It, it, you know, um, but that's why we, we did this positive charge. That's why we did this uh, this Instagram page. And um, Duncan from Surf Bay Sparks, you know, he's the main the main source behind it. Um, and it seems to be working. It seems to be we've got momentum, which is great, which is what we want, which is what we've aimed to do. So, you know, and you don't have to be male or female. You don't have to be a tradesperson. You know, um, we set it up as three tradesmen doing it, but we've got tradesmen, we've got tradeswomen, we've got you know um we've got all sorts of people in it which is great and we're just reaching out to people who are you know other professionals as well you know um a mate of mine's a, a gp but he goes see hundreds of people hears everyone's problems goes home you know and doesn't he can't he doesn't talk to his wife about anything so so he's doing this and it you know that's that's changing him as well so yeah i think you know, um just want to go to a couple of the comments um, before we finish on a lighter note. We've got Six Nations coming up, Harry. We'll have a good old chat about that. Um, Elwyn Kieran Birchall. Looks like a Welsh name, Irish name, and then an English surname. Um, I'm in the flooring trade, and we're lucky in the sense that amongst the four fitters and the girls in the office, we've got a strong bond, family-like, and we always share our problems and any worries in our private life. That's what I think is needed more of on site, in the van and so on. Men are too proud to say anything which needs to change because it only builds and causes bigger problems. Uh, love the uploads, lads. Keep it up. So it's back to um, there was another comment um, that I think it was Sharon said, um, you know, don't go on to pills. Talking helps. John Bird, Mind, the charity. Absolutely brilliant um, charity. They've done loads. They do stuff at UK Construction Week at um, the NEC, let's get exhibitions back, please, because they're great. Um, David Milner also said Mind is a group which has helped him. Um, so I think the main thing that we're we're saying here is the stigma's coming down, but don't be afraid to talk. If it's if you're in the military, if you're a tradesperson, if you're a professional sportsman, um, don't be afraid to help. And tomorrow's obviously time to talk day. 
Um, and I'd really like to thank Tool Station for sponsoring um, today's show um, and all the great work they do across the industry. Now, just to finish um, on a light note, I always like to finish my show on a light note. Um, we've got the perfect person to ask. Um, is Harry being a professional rugby player? Sadly, he's English, not Welsh, like Matt and myself. Uh, Harry, Six Nations, Wooden Spoon, and uh, is it going to be a Grand Slam or just a championship winner? Who is it? I honestly don't know. It's a tough one, isn't it? I feel a bit outnumbered here with you two, but um, I'll stick to I'll stick to my roots. Although, although England have got a couple of injuries, I just think the momentum which they've had from you know, past tournaments and the upset of the, the World Cup um, final. I just think that they're still getting better and I think that there's there's possibility and a chance for them to do really well in this tournament. Um, but as ever, the Six Nations is such a great tournament. Um, there's lots of upsets. Um, I'm looking forward to watching it. Will it make a big difference for the players? You can vouch for this. Playing in empty stands because... You know, I don't think, listen, Matt and I are going to agree on this, but the roof shut at the Millennium, Wales, England, forget about talking to anyone because you can't be heard. That atmosphere pulls you as a player. Going out 15 against 15, Harry, it must be a bit weird, isn't it? It is very weird. And we're at Northampton, we're so lucky that we have such a good fan base. You know, we have 15, yeah. 16,000 people every week um, and you feel that. You, you, and as a player, you thrive off the um, the negative and the positive parts, and and they they really are the momentum uh, shifters in the game. So playing in front of nobody it takes you back to when you're at school again, and you really mm. have to create that that energy and that buzz between yourselves as a group. And I, I think that's why you see across sports recently, um, home form isn't counting so much. Um, you know, they, they, even in, in the football, say, the, these teams that were so strong over such periods at home um, have suddenly lost it because they've no longer got 80,000 people behind them, um, which quite in, in these tight, tight margin games can be the difference. Um, so, yeah, as a player, it certainly makes a difference and you have to, you have to adapt and find a way. I honestly can't wait to have our fans back. Um, and we, miss, we miss them a lot. Well, as you say... You know, being a Saints player, you've got, I think, if it's right, one of the most loyal followings in terms mm. of numbers. Um, and, you know, playing there, well, not every week with your away games, but every other week, it must be brilliant. Matt, Six Nations. Um, Elwin has jumped in with Wales for the Grand Slam. Being a Welshman, I remember the horrible days of the 90s when we were losing to uh, Samoa in the World Cup. Luckily, it wasn't all of Samoa, just Western Samoa. Um, I'm worried, mate, that, oh, God, he's Del Verhorn from Ireland. Money <laughs> on Ireland. Uh, and, and I, Matt, are we facing a wooden spoon apart from Italy? My money is on that. Yeah, I'm, to be honest, I'm not too sure. If we could take it back to the 80s, that would be better, wouldn't it? Um, but that's because, obviously, that's when we played better. But, yeah, it's hard to tell. It's hard to know what's going to happen in there in the Six Nations, I think that Ireland are always strong. I yeah. think that they're always a, a good team, a good, strong team. And and Scotland always throw an upset in there, don't they? Um, they do. Know, so. My money's on France. Look, at um, I know we're going yeah. off topic here, but obviously we've got a great guest in Harry, professional yeah. player. Um, you know, I'm the worst thing the WRU ever did was get rid of Sean Edwards. Well, not renew his contract. Obviously, he's been offered lots of francs or whatever they have in France. Um, yeah. But look what he's done over there. <laughs> You know, the French yeah. have never been asked, but look at their defence. It's phenomenal. Mm. Um, they've got these young players coming through. Next World Cup, put your money on them, I say. Just to finish off, Harry, um, you've obviously, um, I think it was the under-20s, wasn't it? You were, yeah. um, you've sort of knocked on the, the door of the international side. You got in the EPS squad. <laughs> uh, how, how close are you, mate, to um, stepping up at sort of 10 or 12? And what is your favourite position, 10 or 12? Uh, probably. So I'm playing mainly at fullback at the minute. Um, so probably, probably fly half or fullback as my preferred. I know I've sat on the fence there, but um, for me, I'm hoping to be back playing um, very soon, and I just want to. I just want to get back to it. To be honest, Andy, I'm. I'm not thinking too far ahead, and with like we mentioned before, such a sustained period away from playing. All I want to do is get back and, and enjoy playing again, get that consistency back. 
Uh, I think there's crossovers to that with with everyone just wanting live sport back and and yeah. wanting to get down there. Whether, yeah. Not not just sport, whether it be uh, music or or yeah. theatre or just even seeing their mates for a beer on a Friday night. Um, yeah, exactly. We, we oh. want it all back. Well, Rob Whiffin, wow, George producer, legends. Just put it straight up. This live chat has uh, been a pick me up today, and it's cheered him up. Stay safe. Um, not quite sure what that hashtag says. Uh, Cymru, yes. Uh, <laughs> uh, we're running out of time, but thanks ever so much um, to Tool Station for sponsoring today's show. Time to talk day tomorrow. Um, Matt, uh, obviously being a fellow Welshman, always a wonder uh, to have you on the show. Harry, thank you thanks very much, for um, Cheers, it fellas. Was, uh, brilliant to hear your side from obviously being a professional sportsman. Um, Harry said, everybody, before we came on air, he's probably not going to want me to say this, but you know what I'm like. Uh, he really enjoyed helping his mate landscape in his garden. He's looking to get back into it. So if anyone's looking for a <laughs> um, Harry is volunteering his services, um, yeah. obviously social distancing. But I think we've covered everything um, in the half an hour just over to do with mental health. The key message here. Harry and Matt is is don't be afraid to talk. Um, we cross over very similarly, rugby, tradespeople, military, um, and you know, other sports. So don't be afraid to talk. Let's get this stigma out the way. Um, Harry, you must be going to um uh sort of head off to training today, or are you have you got a day off? Day off, so a bit of recovery for me, some stretching and uh I'm getting in the ice as well as Matt. So uh yeah. yeah. Brilliant, brilliant. Well, listen, thanks ever so much uh, to both of you. Just to recap, uh, you can see this. Um, obviously, will be kept on the Facebook and YouTube channel of On The Tools if you've missed it or want to watch it again. Um, it'll also be available as a podcast um, on Monday. Um, shameless plug, um, Build It is my podcast. Um, and very similar to On The Tools, we talk about topics um, that affect construction um, had Charlie Mullins from Pimlico Plumbers on last week. And blimey, we put the world to rights. Matt and Harry, thanks ever so much. Um, great to talk to you. Um, everybody watching, don't be afraid to go and have a chat. Um, and let's go back to the graft and uh, stick the kettle on because it's starting to rain here. Um, and I'll see you all again next week. <laughs>